Awesome. Um, as he said, I am Justin Heilman. I am sometimes also Bob. I'm co-founder of a company in San Francisco called Presentate, and we're trying to save the world from death by a PowerPoint uh, one deck at a time. Um, Arr. Uh, this is fitting because this is what pirates say, right? Um, and it turns out that PHP is for pirates. I don't know how, I, I've got a very specific sort of love-hate relationship with this language and I imagine a lot of you do as well. Um, it's, it's inconsistent, it's weird, it, has, uh, it does funny things and it has little bits from all over the place, right? But it's got good regular expressions because it stole those from Perl and it's got this weird construct that's kind of array-like and kind of hash-like that it also stole from Perl. Um, but then it's got like C APIs kind of mixed in there and, and uh, you know, some of them just like copy and pasted wholesale. And uh, more recently, um, the PHP community has been stealing things like uh, Node's NPM and Ruby's Gems to make Composer so that we can have better package <laughs> management. Um, and even amongst, uh, even amongst PHP libraries and frameworks, there's a lot of this theft going on. And just look at the, the sheer number of frameworks for PHP 5.3 and 5.4 that are all vying for attention. Um, and it's pretty obvious that there's a lot of, a lot of people uh, hacking on a lot of things and it's, and it's a really vibrant, interesting uh, ecosystem. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about some other things that PHP should steal. Um, and we'll do that by looking at uh, JavaScript and Ruby and, and some other similar languages. Um, it turns out that R is also the noise that I make when I have to debug PHP um, because every time I go back to it, uh, really, um, this is the state of the art, right? This is what almost everybody does almost all of the time. Um, there are other tools, and I'll, I'll go through some of the other tools, uh, but it turns out that this is a pretty, I mean, it's fast and it's easy and, and uh, you know, it's at least a known tool. Um, I was reading a, a new article the other day um, that was recommending different PHP debugging techniques, and this is an article written like in the last month. Um, and they said they said use this, and they said install xdebug because it gives you better better dumps when you dump. Um, and then they said install uh, fire PHP, which is like firebug, but like pipes some junk from your from your server into your browser, so that you can inspect application state a little bit. Um, and almost all of the top Google results for PHP debugging are this exact same sort of article about how to optimize your, your dumping uh, workflow. Um, it turns out there are better things, right? There's a thing called GDB. Um, how many of you have used that? Or DBGP, which is the more awkward way to say it. Uh, GDB, um, this reminds me of, of freshman year of college uh, trying to find memory leaks and, and stack overflows in. Uh, C code, right? It's it's kind of an awkward interface, um, but it does let you step through code and, and uh, that sort of thing. Um, and it turns out that's really powerful. Uh, there are better ways to do it though, because it's a protocol, right? So uh, IDEs like Eclipse and um, you know all of those guys, uh, PHP Storm and and everything all have kind of a built-in version of this thing. It's essentially the same tool, though, right? It's the ability to add a breakpoint and it's the ability to step through code a little bit at a time. Um, and stepping through is great. Uh, I'm not very good at it, it turns out. I usually like step too far and have to go back and start over and things like that. Um, but this is definitely possible. Uh, I, my workflow is a little more sublime text and a little less IDE. Uh, so I use this thing called Mac GDBP. Um, how many of you played with this one? Uh, let's see. Here we go. Let's look at a really quick, nope. There's a little PHP app running on localhost and it should fail. Yes, there we go, it fails because it's supposed to because then we can actually look at it with GDBP. And attach. There we go, thank you Mac. Maybe we'll skip this part. It is not attaching. I don't know why it's not attaching.
try that again. How's that size wise? Is that big enough? All right, here we go. All right, so this is uh, GDBP or DBG. This is this is fairly typical of most of the tools that you'll use to do it. Um, it uh, when you make a request, it hooks into uh, an API exposed by the xdebug PHP extension, and then kind of gives you basically where you are in the app uh, via a trace. It gives you the current variables, and it gives you the code right around where you are. Um, and you can do things like set a breakpoint and say go to that breakpoint. And ideally, it would go to it. There we go. Um, and remember, there was an error. So let's figure out what our error is by stepping into this and looking. And it turns out that data is uninitialized because I left data uninitialized. So we'll just add that, right? My tools aren't liking me today. There we go. OK. So now we can step into this. And it should have actually worked. But let's actually eval it to make sure right now. No, nope, don't care about the cookie. I told you I'm not very good at stepping over things. I always get them in the wrong spot. Nope, we're not going to have a GDB demo today because it doesn't like me. All right, so that's the that's the basic uh, workflow is, is step into things, look at things, maybe eval something to, to check out current state, um, but get frustrated and give up and go back to far dump and die, um, which is where I typically go. Um, so, so why do people do this? Why do, with tools that should be able to give us a better picture of what's going on, why do we go back to uh, printing application state and refreshing? Um, I would postulate that it's because it's not easy enough, right? It's really easy to just throw a line of code into your code base. Um, and that's because we don't have a specific tool that a lot of other people have. Um, and that is a redevelop print loop. Uh, this is something that comes out of the lispy, schemey sort of part of the world. The idea that you should have uh, an interactive application state that you can, you can do things with and change the current state of it um, and then continue on with life, right? Um, and there's uh, and it, and you, odds are you've dealt with one even if you haven't done much functional programming. Um, there's kind of one already in PHP, uh, right? I mean, that's called the interactive shell, PHP-A. Um, so let's, let's play with that for a second. So in a redevelop print loop, you should be able to evaluate something, and then it should print the result of it, and then you can do it again. Um, that's the loop part. So it'll read my input, 1 plus 1. Um, it doesn't seem to have done anything. That's because I probably uh, need to leave a semicolon on it. But it still didn't do anything because it, it leaves off the entire print part of it, right? So you manually print. Remember the semicolon. Um, there we go. So it's there. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we read 
kind of, we avowed kind of, we print, printed kind of, um, and then the loop is that we get to do it again. Um, and the cool thing is you can, you can add some state and things like that. Um, you, can, uh, you can make an object, and then you can var dump it, because this is the limit of our introspection. Um, and there's our object that has nothing interesting about it, but we can actually look at it, right? Um, maybe make a class and a trait. And that didn't work very well. Um, no, it doesn't need semicolons on the class and traits. It's because they're case sensitive, right? Uh, it's because PHP doesn't know enough to save you from yourself. Um, <coughs> because it's a fairly limited tool, um, especially compared to, think about uh, the other tools you might have encountered. Um, JavaScript, for example. There are brilliant uh, kind of combination, right? They'll let you step through code, and then they'll also let you do the redevelop print loop in the JavaScript console. Uh, hmm. Nope, there we go. We get a really, really narrow redevelop print loop. In our JavaScript console. So with this one, we can we can do one plus one, and it reads it, evals it, and prints it, and we actually get it to. Uh, we can make an object. Um, we can add a property. We can type correctly. So now when we look at foo, we can actually uh, see that it has function and you can do all sorts of things with it. And it gives us a little bit more understanding of what's going on, um, where in the PHP interactive shell we're kind of limited to actually just, you know, back to our old print or dump. Um, and that gives us data but not much else. Yeah? It, it, also, it also allows you to actually stop it while it's executing. Right. And state. Exactly. Exactly. So it's kind of, it lets you do like a combination of the GDB style debugging with breakpoints and step through and uh, an actual interactive shell. And the cool thing is you can actually interact with it while you're stepping through. Um, so JavaScript's got this great, right? And, and even Internet Explorer has a great version of this. Um, so Internet Explorer is ahead of PHP in that regard, uh, which is kind of sad. Um, Python has Python. Uh, one of the cool things about Python is if you go to the command line and you type Python, you get an interactive shell and you can start typing Python code. Uh, if you try that with PHP, it just kind of sits there and stares at you blankly um, because it's expecting you to manually enter an entire file and hit command or control D when you're done to execute it. Um, seems like a sane default. Uh, let's play with that for a second. So we've got Python. Um, in Python, you can do the maths, right? So one plus one, you can make an object. In this case, we're making a dictionary. Uh, the cool thing is you can actually look at this dictionary and it'll tell you what methods are on it. Uh, maybe you can actually even look at the documentation on that. So foo.keys.doc. Um, so the, doc, the uh, dictionary's keys method gives you a list of its keys, um, which is kind of awesome, right? So we can actually do more than just uh, more than just execute code as if we're a really really slow file input, and we can play with it and we can see what's going on and we can inspect this a bit. Um, Ruby's got IRB. How many of you guys have, have done much with Ruby? OK, awesome. So we'll go over that really quick, right? So IRB, uh, a really similar thing, right? So as most redevelop print loops, you, it will read and evaluate things, make an object. And we can use some introspection and do really similar things to the, to the Python as well. Um, and that's cool. Uh, but then it gets even cooler when you realize that you can use metaprogramming and, and uh, all the tools that Ruby gives you to make something even better, um, which lets you do things like this. This is pry if you haven't seen it before. So again, we're back to our object. This time it's an object with syntax highlighting in pretty colors because it knows what parts of the object are what. Um, we can actually look at the object and see what methods it has. We can uh, 
we can view documentation for put s, for example, um, and then I'll actually read the documentation and kind of tell you, you know, what it's expecting argument-wise and, and whatever is provided. You can show the source of it. Uh, nope. Show source put s. There we go. And we can actually see some C code from Ruby in Pry, uh, which gives us a lot more state. And then in addition, Pry will do some of this like jumping around and uh, breakpoints and, and that sort of thing. Um, so for example, there we got another broken hello world. Um, we can actually add uh, a breakpoint using uh, binding.pry. Um, which will drop us right into the middle of that current state. And then from there, we can walk around. We can go, we can uh, step in and out. We can actually uh, change things. You notice it wasn't printing the world because that's not set. So we can actually set that. And that time it worked because we actually changed the application state and made it uh, have a planet. Um, and I found that as I code more and more, especially like CSS and JavaScript, right? I spend my time in the inspector and in the console uh, figuring out what I'm going to do interactively, uh, writing code and uh, messing with data and manipulating things and, and sorting all of that stuff out. And then when I've got it to a state where it makes sense in my head, uh, I'll copy it and paste it into a file and, and that becomes part of my code. Um, unfortunately, you can't really do that in PHP uh, due to the limitations of the tools. Um, so there are some better options than PHP-A. This one is written by Facebook. It's called PHPSH, I guess. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, it solves a lot of the problems that uh, PHP-A has. It doesn't crash and, and dump you back to the command line nearly as often. Um, it actually uh, prints the result after you do something. Um, it is written in Python, which is a little bit weird. Um, and it's hard to install, especially if you don't have Python set up on your system. Um, but that's how they get around the, the fact that PHP is crashy and, and dumps you back on the command line is by wrapping it all in a Python loop. <laughs> um, so that's one way to do it. Uh, but you want a, a, a PHP redevelop print loop written in PHP, right? Like something that's actually native PHP. Um, it turns out you're in luck. Uh, as of the last like couple of months, um, there's a really interesting tool that came out called Boris. Uh, I don't know if you've played with that yet. Um, Boris tries to bring some of the uh, tools that other people have into uh, PHP and also tries to make things that are a lot more stable. And so what it does is it has a forking loop. Basically, uh, it uses um, processes. It, it, it forks every time it executes a command. Um, and then uh, it can back up if it has problems and, and keeps you from dumping out onto the command line nearly as often. Uh, but today we're going to talk about another one called SciSH. Uh, because I know a little bit more about this one. Um, so compared to the Python install, it's, it's pretty easy. Because um, it turns out if you have a system running PHP, you can run PHP. Um, and let's play with it a little bit. debug was connecting to it and keeping it from running. Uh, again, if I can get my language straight. Um, pretty similar to uh, most of the other shells. Uh, it knows about pretty much anything on your system. Um, Uh, it has mutable state.
Um, let's do that again. Because I always forget the order of that. Uh, so it managed to not lose things when we did that. But uh, since I always forget the order, we kept a copy of it handy here so we can actually see uh, at any time, you know, if we want to look up the documentation for something or uh, does it actually work on that? Source code unavailable, unfortunately. Um, so, so again, it's a it's a tool that lets us look around. We can we can view documentation. We can view source code. Um, let's do it this way. And like the pry tool, we can actually uh, jump from the middle of a running application into. Uh, shell. So where are we? We're inside hello world run. We've got an M instance. That's our mustache. We've got some datas. Um, that's that. We can actually change the datas. Uh, There's a typo. Yeah, it ignored it. <laughs> um, That shouldn't have happened. All right, so um, a, a similar sort of thing, right? It's a, it's a tool that lets us uh, interact with and view and uh, show documentation of and change application state while we're running. Um, but why is this cool? Um, <coughs> why does that matter? Uh, like I said, because of exploratory programming. Because um, Brett, I forget his name. How many of you saw the the uh, video, the presentation a while back about JavaScript editors that let you actually visualize output and see things in their state? Right. This was. You should check this out. It's. I don't remember his name. His name is Brett something. I'll post a link with these slides. Um, and he was talking about how uh, when you can see something, we can when you can explore it when you can view what happens when you change something. Uh, it's a lot uh, it's, it's a lot easier to learn, it's a lot easier to interact with, and you're a lot more productive. Um, and so the same way that the JavaScript console makes you more productive, the same way that uh, the Python or Ruby console makes you more productive, um, you should be able to write PHP code in this way. Um, yeah. Right, right. Um, I mean, it, it's a normal in any normal control flow sort of way you can do that. Um, at this point, this is kind of ugly because this is all user land code, right? There's no uh, extensions installed or anything like that. Um, you could make a debug keyword or something like that if you wanted. Um, but this is using what PHP has defined for for me creating mutable state and editing things and and getting the local variables and everything. Um, yeah. Um, so you can explore, and you can debug. Um, it turns out you can use a read eval print loop a lot like uh, that debug tool, except it's as easy to drop into your code as uh, the print statement, right? So instead of printing it, you can just say, you know, give me a debugger, uh, the same way we did here. And then you can actually interact with it, and you can actually look at it, and you can actually change things, um, rather than uh, getting into the GDBP and trying to step through things. You can actually, you know, be there and play with it. Um, and you totally get to hang out with the cool kids. Um, promise.
So what's next? So this is a, a really early version of this tool. Um, it definitely has a long way to go. Um, it has, it's kind of at minimum viable implementation of an interactive shell. Uh, next is tab completion, for example. It doesn't have that. Um, and it will have tab completion across uh, all the local variables and across all the methods and classes that it knows about. Um, in version 2.0, we're planning to add uh, DBGP client integration so that it can actually do the, it can be a client to a remote instance. So uh, you can hook into it without having to drop a line of code in um, and interact with it the same way as you would uh, via Xcode's um, hooks. And what else is next is, um, yeah, and open sourcing it. Uh, this has been in private development for the last six months or so. Um, so we'll open source that as well. Um, probably right now. How's that sound? <laughs> uh, questions, comments, thoughts while I'm pulling this up? Yes. Uh, no, the, the Boris one is another one. Oh, okay. Um, it's a similar tool. It has a little bit different opinions about how things should be done. Okay. Um, SciSH. Okay. What's this right here? It's something. <laughs> I don't pronounce it. <laughs> don't look. All right, so now it's open source, and so it can work for OS Bridge, right? <laughs> Other thoughts? What, what do you guys do that I didn't talk about? What's your, what's your favorite technique? Are, are, how many people use print statements and, and dies and things like that on a regular basis? How many people use interactive debugging of any sort? How many people don't do anything? <laughs> yeah. Which become not interactive in the sense that you have to say, I may be pushing the button to change hands a little bit. Because like, I'm still stoked that I can change a lot of code and take control of R to see what it did. Instead of, Instead of compiling. Of making a sandwich coming back running the program to find that there's still a button. Yeah. At least with a stack trace and and program state, how many times? How often does PHP not call that? Do you have a sense of that? Because like, I've definitely seen cases where it doesn't, where it dies hard enough that it doesn't get the shutdown handler. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Did you build? Have you built tools around that, or is that mostly just like an email and then go deal with it? Other thoughts on debugging or interaction or, or development? Yeah. So how do we collectively move the state of PHP development forward, I don't know, into this century? We did. <laughs> that, that's a start. How 
how is it connecting to? Does it XD bug have to be running? Does it handle shutdown? You could put the SciShell into the shutdown exception. Um, right now, it's only in the same way that you would like type a debugger in your JavaScript console to get it to jump to the console, or in your JavaScript code to get it to jump to the console. You you explicitly insert it the same way you would insert a, no, I mean, a dump. How is it actually able to, how is it getting a hook into PHP and then it? Um, it is. Uh, Playing fast and loose with threads, and and uh, it, it kills its parent with a with a halt, um, or not a halt. What the one that the one that makes it stop for a bit deals with the child, and then starts the parent back up again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Facebook's is uh, very much just fix PHP dash A. It isn't built with the intent of adding an additional layer of interestingness on the top of it. Um, where's my shell? So um, Sci Shell, for example, has uh, a whole list of custom commands, and you can make or a whole list of commands, and you can make as many commands as you want um, for things like introspection and and dealing with things. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that one's actually a good one. Um, so if we do, is that one? Oh, no more shooting. That'll actually give me the exception, but then I can actually get a little bit more context out of it by. <laughs> Asking for it. Um, so the idea is that this is this is a way to to layer a bunch of interesting ways to introspect code and introspect uh, documentation, or to to look up documentation and to show you you know what's going on. Um, and the the PHP shell uh, Facebook's doesn't have any of that. Um, Boris tends to be uh, it does a lot of the things like uh, the code cleaning that. That SciShell does, where it, it actually tries to keep you from uh, referencing variables that don't exist and things like that. Um, it'll it'll keep you from actually like throwing real in exceptions. It'll uh, read your code and, and decide if you're doing something dumb and, and not actually execute it. Um, Boris does similar things uh, to that, but it doesn't do, for example, um, that, that's a nice feature for me um, because I typo things all the time and and. Uh, um, one thing, for example, that SciShell does is automatic semicolon insertion. So if you, if you are familiar with JavaScript, um, basically if, it's, if it could conceivably be a valid uh, statement and you hit enter at the end, it doesn't make you add a semicolon. Um, where with Boris or PHP shell, either one of those would force you to do that. Yeah, they're they're fairly similar. Yeah, um, they open sockets to talk to each other and and fairly Linuxy sort of stuff. Um, SciShell does have some fallback things for if you don't have threads available and forks available. Um, example: if you're on Windows, um, it will try and sometimes dump you out of the shell more often than it would otherwise. Um, but it just kind of deals with it. It also has fallbacks if you don't have read line, for example. Um, yeah. I use this to replace you know, like, PHP-A. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like this is great, and it should just be and IRB, right? You don't have to do something else to get IRB, right? You can download it or yeah, yeah so. it would be really nice. Um, have you ever tried to get anything into PHP Core? No, I haven't. But you know what PSR zero is the auto loader standard. Um, most new PHP frameworks and libraries follow the exact same standard for where they put files relative to the classes that are in them. It's it's very like map them directly to the files that you would expect them to be in. Um, they tried to get that included in PHP Core, and it was shot down because it didn't you know it wasn't a one size fits all, and some people didn't like it. So it's possible. I I wouldn't hold my what breath though. Mean, 
I think the revolution comes from user land. <laughs> What's that? Not very many people, because it like crashes and doesn't work, yeah. and it's kind of a pain. Um, that's a really good question. Um, because it's essentially a superset of PHP-A, right? So maybe it tries too hard. Maybe it does some things that it shouldn't. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So maybe this is a PHP problem, not a problem. Uh, we have uh, So. I don't know. That's, that's a really good question. Um, As it is now, we write monitors. Right. Do you write the parent and the child both in the same PHP process? They're not like spinning up a sub shell or anything. Just just a just a fork. Okay. All right. How's that working out? Does it? Have, okay. Okay. Yeah, because I've, I've definitely tried that uh, on more than one occasion and had less luck than I would like and ended up using something like God or Monit to keep up the PHP thread. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Awesome. Thank you. Go download. Go download SciShell and help make it awesomer. Oh, that's the company I work for. We, we, oh, awesome. <laughs> you should do that. Uh, it's in pretty early alpha right now. Um, we have been working on it full time about six months. It went into alpha a couple of weeks ago. Um, Thanks for signing up to the beta. We'll let you in. <laughs> That's this. This is my presentation software that I'm using. So, awesome. Thank you.